I love this show and I love this network. But I've got to ask who is writing the scripts? Hamas, the people who did this, they are not fighters, Jonathan. They are not militants. And I'm looking right at the camera. They are terrorists. Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. In today's episode, we're covering all the major headlines that you need to know about, ranging from updates on what's going on inside Israel to anti-Israel protests popping up all around the world. We're giving you updates on our southern border. And lastly, the White House is responding to what exactly is going on with that $6 billion they want to give to Iran. We got it covered for you today, folks. Before we jump into any of it, support a true American patriot by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. Share this link with your friends and family all over social media. Your help and support would be greatly appreciated. Well, we have the five here from Fox News reacting to barbaric attacks on Israelis. Like I said, hit that like and subscribe button, folks. We'd love your support. Let's roll it. Israel is continuing to target Hamas terror sites with precision strikes as they prepare for a ground invasion of Gaza. Time could be of the essence as we get new reports of Hamas's barbaric acts. The savages are now beheading babies. They are aggressive. They are very bad. They cut head of children, cut head of women, but we are stronger than them. You see the babies, the mother, the fathers in the bedrooms, in the protection rooms, and how the terrorists kill them. It's not a war. It's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. It's a terror act activity. Trey Yanks is in southern Israel. Trey, uh, there are people that are questioning the accuracy of this report about beheadings as if the previous bar barbarism wouldn't have predicted this activity. What kind of toll is this taking on the soldiers and the rescuers? Yeah, Greg, I don't think people would be questioning those reports if they've seen the amount of mutilated bodies we've seen in southern Israel. Thousands of Hamas fighters, it appears, on Saturday morning crossed into this country and killed everyone they could find. Those who didn't die from the initial attack were dragged back into Gaza, and that's why there are still dozens held captive beneath the Gaza Strip. The level of brutality just simply should not be questioned. People were killed in their homes, in their beds. They were killed in their, their bus stops, on benches. This was barbaric, and there's really no other way to describe what took place in southern Israel. And we're getting more and more information trickle in that they were not looking only for men of military age, for example, they were killing children, they were killing babies, they were killing women, they were dragging grandparents into the Gaza Strip. Folks, I am going to try my best to be level-headed. I'm going to try my best not to cuss, but we're not the Disney Channel today. Go watch PBS or something else if you don't want to see and hear the real ish that's going on. Because you got people out there going, oh, this isn't real. None of this is real. Yes, it is real. And there's people out there that are supporting these terrorists. They're going around beheading people. If you want to watch a video of it, it's all on Twitter. Beheading people, gutting them, having their intestines spill out on the floor while they're freaking alive, mowing entire families down with machine guns, executing people in front of their family members, raping women and children, beheading babies, skinning people alive, lighting people on fire alive, launching more than 5,000 rockets into residential areas. We need to wake up. Because right now, which is why I've been so tired of people going, oh, I'm so oppressed, I'm so oppressed here in America and just shitting on our own country. And I've said time and time again, there's real evil out there and now you're seeing it. And you know what's astonishing? You have these people that are part of the LGBTQ community and if you are one, I got no problem with that. You're living in the greatest country to be part of that community. But there's these people that are holding up LGBTQ community for Hamas, for Palestine. Clearly, they don't get it. And somebody maybe should send them an email on what those people would do to you if they found out that you're a part of that community. Because we embrace you here in America. You might think that we don't, but we do. There's real evil out there that wants to sit there and do actual harm to you. All the while, there's people in our own country that want to get rid of the Second Amendment. I don't think so. I ain't giving up my shit. Mm -mm, not with this going on. And if you think that it's not going to come here or already is not here, you got one thing coming to you with what's going on on our southern border. And we'll get to that in just one moment.
This is who these fighters are, and this is the type of terror that they looked to in inflict on the population here in southern Israel. Trey, it's Dana. One of the things Dan Hoffman said this morning uh, was that one of his former CIA supervisors said the longer you have hostages out there, the longer they're out there, the harder it is to solve. And I'm wondering if you've heard anything more about any plans, ideas, possibilities of getting these hostages safely out of the Gaza Strip. He makes a great point. The Israelis and the Americans have no idea where these hostages are right now. And if you hear anything different, it's bad intelligence because the Gaza Strip has a network of tunnels that they have no way to surveil deep, deep underground in places that while the Israelis may have an idea they are tunneling in certain parts of the Strip, they simply can't identify where these people would have been taken. And with a 25-mile strip of land that's anywhere from three to seven miles long, there are a lot of places for Hamas and Islamic Jihad to hide these hostages. And that's not accounting for the high-rise buildings that there are in Gaza. 1.9 million people, a heavily populated area, and multiple different population centers. You have Gaza City, you have Rafa in the south, and you have Han Yunus. For those that are listening to audio, we're seeing footage here of these terrorists taking children taking elderly luckily that lady that was in that vehicle was supposedly rescued but as i've mentioned there's a minimum 20 americans that we can't account for right now we don't know what's happened to them over a thousand people have died in israel and it's only getting worse this in the middle they could be anywhere and so even if the israelis launch this ground war into gaza and they take territory First of all, they're going to be engaged right away by Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants. We've seen it happen in the past. And secondly, they are going to have to search deep underground to try and find them, which has a whole challenge of its own. Do you believe there is a plan in place, a contingency operation, should they ever go into Gaza? I know they never wanted to go in, but if they have to come up with a plan, as well as mobilizing 300,000, I imagine to be effective... And to be responsible, you might have to wait a little bit. I'm not sure time is on their side. Do you think they know what they're going to do and how to do it? Just to let you know, this woman here that was just pulled out of the Jeep, it's blurred right now, but she's all bloodied. And the back of her pants is bloody because she was freaking raped. All the while, you have people coming out that won't sit there. And, 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 and denounce whatever you want to call it, these terrorists called Hamas and others. There's disgusting people out there. There's pure evil out there, and you're seeing it. Absolutely. There are contingency plans in the Israeli military echelon for these types of situations, especially when it comes to a ground operation in Gaza. Many times over the past several years, we've seen similar scenes at the border between Israel and Gaza, tanks and APC staging thousands of soldiers, but not at this level. They have trained in these environments. There's actually a training center in the desert where they have built similar buildings to what they have in Gaza City so that the Israeli soldiers and some reserve forces will go to this center in the desert and they will work on clearing buildings. They will practice what it's like to take over a block inside of an urban battle environment and then hold that territory. And that's exactly what these uh, these warriors are going to be doing when they enter Gaza, it, when that decision is made. It will be a difficult battle, though, because of the urban battle environment. They will be faced not only with small arms fire, but RPGs and unexpected attacks like you've seen conducted by the Islamic State in the past. Hi, Trey. It's Jessica. Um, I'm curious. We're now on day four um, of this massacre. What do you think are the crucial differences from where we even were yesterday and what tomorrow is going to look like? I think the biggest difference is the shift in momentum on the northern front. Mm. Two Israeli soldiers died overnight from the incursions by Hezbollah militants. Mm. There was more rocket fire from Lebanon, not just targeting the Sheba Farms area, this contested area in the very northern part of Israel, but this time targeting the western border uh, between Israel and Lebanon. Additionally, we saw attempted mortar fire from Syria, and we talked about this yesterday on the program, the possibility of a multi-front conflict opening up for Israel. And already the Israelis have responded with artillery strikes in Syria. They're mm -hmm. looking to send a clear message that if that front does open up, they're willing to strike 
anywhere at any time with all of the firepower they have. And as we heard today from the administration, the Americans stand with their Middle East ally, Israel, and they're willing to provide some level of support for this fight. You guys, we are spread so freaking thin right now. It is ridiculous. And uh, there is talk that Biden might send another carrier fleet. And I think that he should. I really do. I think that he should because you got Syria involved. You got Hezbollah involved. You obviously have Hamas involved. And I do think Israel needs to go in and just take over Gaza. Look, the Palestinians had it. it people keep saying free Palestine. I don't know what that means. You, you, you've had the territory since 2005, 2006. You, you've, you've received billions of dollars in aid, and you've done nothing with it other than support Hamas. So maybe it's not a bad idea if you want to free Palestine to have Israel go in there, terminate these terrorists, take over the Gaza Strip again. We're already, we're already giving them electricity and water as it was for free. So you might as well absorb it and allow the Palestinians then thus to be free if that's really what they want. But that's not what they want, okay? That is not what they want. What people want is to gas the Jews because there's anti-Israel protesters appearing on the steps of Sydney Opera House chanting this stuff. This is coming from Twitter. Again, a lot of the stuff, thank God we have Elon Musk that actually opened Twitter back up for us, uh, releasing all this video and the atrocities that's taking place. But this is what a Muslim mob of hundreds chant, quote, gas the Jews, fuck the Jews. This is uh, as of October 9th, 2023 in Sydney, Australia. We'll roll this for you. <laughs> Said Israel is a terrorist state and they're flying a bunch of Palestinian flags. Let that one sink in. Israel is the terrorist state as Hamas is coming in raping women and children, executing people in the streets and in the neighborhoods and in their houses, as well as beheading people on camera, beheading babies, shooting babies, lighting people on fire, you name it, it's going on. But yeah, Israel's the terrorist. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As they're chanting, gas the Jews. I don't think we need to play any more of that. And by the way, Israel's coming out and saying, hey, look, we want to censor all this stuff that's being thrown online from Hamas or uh, Hezbollah or, or whoever it's coming from. I don't agree with that. Show everybody what's going on. Show everybody what's going on because it's only going to build more support for Israel. It's only going to support more for Israel. Again, Israel wants to sit there and censor this material that's online, and I don't think we should. Because you're seeing atrocities to the Jews on a level that we haven't seen since the Holocaust. And obviously the Holocaust doesn't put this into perspective or in proportion whatsoever, but it just shows you how long it's been since we've seen something this terrible happening to the Jews. Well, it's not just happening in uh, Sydney, Australia. We have a clip here from a couple years ago with Charlie Kirk on campuses doing debates here, talking to a Palestinian student who refuses to denounce Hamas. Again, this has been going on for years and years in the United States. These people don't get it. These students don't get it because their education has been so washed down where they can't add or subtract that you can't expect them to fully comprehend exactly what's going on. And this is the outcome of these students. Which, 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 land, which land are you talking about specifically? Well, Gaza, they've, Gaza, they've given up. Gaza's all PA now. They've given up Gaza? Yes, the IDF does not... How many Jews live in Gaza? How many Jews live in Gaza? Zero. Zero. Every Jewish, every Jewish uh, Israeli was forced out of Gaza in 2005. Zero Jews live in Gaza. Zero. Yes, because Jew, Jews tend to have children. So you have to build more houses to accommodate them? No, no doubt. So it, it, 
So like, let's talk, like, let's just facts about Gaza. It used to be under Israeli IDF control. They gave it up in pursuit of peace in 2005. It's now become a hot tub for terrorists and Hamas. Hundreds of millions a year from the West go to Hamas, yet zero hospitals and zero new schools have been built in the last five years. Yet over 30 terror tunnels have been found in the last two years. They are controlled by Hamas. If anyone defends Hamas, I'm sorry. That's just an indecent conversation I can't have for you. Oh, okay, that, you have a right to that opinion, but let me let me let me finish what I'm. What, what did I just say? That's incorrect, though, because I think the fact that there's no who new hospitals and no new schools being built, and it's Hamas. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being given to them by the UN and by the US. And you guys denounce Hamas. Do you don't ask Hamas? What? You don't wait. What do you think of Hamas? Wait. What do you think of Hamas? Do you know that? It's, no, no, it's an open space. No, it's not. What, do you, no, you don't, it's actually. It's, it's a First Amendment right. You're in a public space, no expectation of privacy. So I'm sorry, you, for, you forfeited your right to privacy being in an open space on a public ground in a public university. So, let, 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 me, let, me, let me say though, but like you do know in Hamas's charter, it does say to kill Jews, right? Like in Hamas's actual like governing documents. Are you okay with that? Well, pa uh, Hamas does use children as human shields. Well, we are, we are, we are. But if, if a 12-year-old is part of Hamas, I have to look at the specifics of that. They should be, they should be interviewed. I mean, of course. I've never said that a country is at fault. I have said they are the most moral country in the Middle East, and I'm fascinated by the amount of hatred that is thrown at them. I'm fascinated by the amount of hatred that is thrown at a country of eight million Jews and a sliver of freedom in the Middle East. Look, Charlie Kirk is not wrong. Not wrong at all, but you're seeing you're seeing students. This, this is what goes on your college campuses, is that they won't sit there and denounce Hamas. They're for this stuff, you guys. That's what we have to get through our head. They are for this stuff. And it's not just them. Black Lives Matter chapters express support for Hamas after terror attacks on Israel. So chapters of far left, Black Lives Matter expressed support this week for Palestinians murdering Jews just eight days after Hamas terrorists launched the largest terror attack on Israel that has ever been encountered, murdering more than a thousand Israelis and injuring more than roughly at this point, it's about 3000. I am trying so hard to keep my composure. I am shaking. I am that pissed. The attacks on Saturday, which drew strong international condemnation from many, also resulted in the deaths of at least 14 Americans and some U.S. citizens being taken hostage. Again, as of right now, the recording of this, there's a minimum of 20 that we know of. Quote, when a people have been subject to decades of apartheid and unimaginable violence, their resistance must not be condemned, but understood as a desperate act of self-defense, Black Lives Matter grassroots posted on X, meaning Twitter. The organization said that it stood in solidarity with our Palestinian family who are currently resisting 57 years of settler colonization and apartheid. The group repeated the false claim that Gaza was the world's largest open-air prison and compared their alleged struggles to the alleged struggles of the Palestinian people. Quote, we too understand what it means to be surveilled, dehumanized, property seized, families separated, our people criminalized and slaughtered with impunity, locked up in droves, and when we resist, they call us terrorists, they claimed. We too dream of a world where our people may live freely on decolonized land. May the borders, checkpoints, prisons, police, and watch lists that terrorize our communities crumble and may the world we build from their ashes honor those who have fallen in struggle. This is insane. Again, this is Black Lives Matter, you guys. Quote, from lasting peace to come, the entire apartheid system must be dismantled. The war on the Palestinian people must cease, the statement concluded. We call on the United States government to immediately stop funding war and redirect the $4 billion in annual spending from the Israeli military to repair the damage caused by U.S.-backed wars, military airstrikes, coups, and destabilizing interventions against oppressed people around the world. Black Lives Matter Chicago appeared to go even one step further, posting a photo showing a paratrooper with a Palestinian flag that stated, I stand with Palestine. The photo is significant because many Hamas terrorists who attacked Israel on Saturday crossed the border with parachutes, meaning this person very well could have sat there and raped women and children 
massacred an entire family and black lives matter is going to stand up for what is right in their eyes and what is right is terrorists coming around beheading children raping women and children and teenagers massacring entire families mowing over people in the streets lighting people on fire beheading them with farming tools that's what black lives matter wants and then they can't fathom why there's a portion, a large swath of the United States that doesn't support jack shit that they do. They can't fathom it. They can't process this, you guys. We have to understand that. Well, here's the White House being asked, hey, uh, what's going on with the roughly $6 billion that you're giving to Iran who gave the missiles and equipment that we know of to Hamas to pull off this kind of attack? Yeah. Thank you, Jake. You just laid out all of the ways that Iran is complicit in this and facilitated it over years of support for Hamas. Is that reason enough to freeze, refreeze the $6 billion that the U.S. helped unlock for them to get in exchange for the prisoners? We have not yet had a dollar of that $6 billion spent, and I will leave it at that. But will you refreeze it based on this activity that you just laid out, all of the ways that they are complicit in this. You, the administration said that if we see them going in the wrong direction, that we would stop that down. I understand the position that you guys have, that not a dollar of this has been spent. But will you prevent it from getting into their hands to allow them to you know, do, do what they do that you just laid out? Let me just reiterate what I said, because it's unequivocal. Not a dollar of that money has been spent, and I will leave it at that. Is it being considered? Yes. Jacob, if I can ask. It's a, by the way, they were pressed on this. It wasn't like this was the only question. Fox News pressed the White House on this. And this is their answer, you guys. Half of America is still going to vote for this administration when they can't even tell you, nope, we're not doing it. We're not giving them the $6 billion. Matter of fact, we're giving them the double middle finger and we're going to give that $6 billion to Israel to sit there and go after these terrorists that have a good possibility of having sleeper cells in the United States because of what's going on at our southern border. We'll get to that in just one moment. But Israel has responded directly to social media posts from Iran's supreme leader. The same, the same leader that might be receiving $6 billion from Joe Biden. That can't even come out and saying, oh, we're not. They, the whole idea of like, well, it's frozen. We're not going to wait. They haven't gotten a dime, but they might. Why are you even leaving it up to that? Why are you not just saying no? They're not getting it. Bunch of idiots, man. Bunch of idiots. And by the way, so clearly, if it is true that we haven't given them the $6 billion, then that $6 billion that Joe Biden hasn't given them clearly didn't fund what was going to Hamas. Meaning they had to get this military-grade equipment from somewhere. So a lot of people are speculating two places, Afghanistan and Ukraine. Who, who Joe Biden funded either way. Joe Biden did it. He gave them. We said this would come back around and bite us in the ass, and now it's biting one of our allies in the ass, quite literally. Iranian Supreme Leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, received a direct response from the nation of Israel Tuesday on social media after he threatened more attacks against the nation if they went after Hamas terrorists in Gaza. F around and find out. The fact that we didn't destroy the entirety of Iran's navy and we only did half of it was a flaw on our part. Next time, we're going to finish the damn job. Hopefully, Joe Biden has the balls for it, or at least hopefully he's awake for it. People are struggling. Have you noticed, you guys, people are struggling getting Joe Biden in front of the mic? They, they had John Kirby on the White House lawn have to emphasize to the American people that the president is working. Let that sink in. You have to go out of your way to give that message that, hey, rest assured the president is working because so many people think the guy is sleeping right now. The remarks come after Hamas, a Palestinian Islamic terrorist group that is heavily backed by Iran, murdered more than a thousand Israelis over the weekend, including 14 Americans, upwards of 20 plus right now, and injured thousands more in a series of widespread terrorist attacks. And people still support these freaking assholes. Heads of the Zionist regime and their backers should know that the massacre and mass murder of the people of Gaza will cause a larger calamity to come upon them. Israel replied directly to the post writing, it's easy to be brave when you're hiding behind a keyboard. You and your Hamas friends will regret your barbaric actions very soon. Like I said, Israel just needs to go into Gaza right now. 
They got the full support of the United States military, the largest military in the world. I think Biden needs to send a second carrier fleet over there just to show them we're not messing around. F around and find out big time. And the fact that Iran has the balls and has been having the balls to poke the bear for quite some time, they need to F around and find out real quick. Syria has the balls because Barack Obama didn't want to do a damn job that he should have done. You see, you see how, do you see how it's a specific party that kind of is involved in allowing shit to go on for some time? If, if you have a boat that wants to sit there and attack our oil tankers and our ships in the seas, you blow their asses out of the water. I'm so tired of just throwing a freaking 50 cal round off the bow and going, that's enough. No, no, no. Blow them out of the water so they never know to fuck around with us again. I told you, if you're looking for the Disney Channel, today isn't it. Because I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of people complaining that they are oppressed when you just had a terrorist group that there's people in America that support this terrorist group going out there pulling this crap. If you're not with me on this, this is not the channel for you. Sorry, bud. I'm pissed, man. And the fact that I'm keeping it this much together, that deserves a like and subscribe. Biden said that his administration stood with Israel and would be providing support, but he failed to mention the Islamic Republic of Iran, which recent reports from the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal have said was behind the attacks because the guy doesn't have the balls to do it. He doesn't even have the balls to fucking tell him they're not going to get the $6 billion after they just pulled this shit. Let that sink in, you freaking numbskull Democrats. You're voting for a guy that still won't come out and say, hey, we're not giving you the $6 billion. The journal said that officers of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps have been working since August with Hamas and other Islamic terrorists in planning the attacks, which included firing thousands of rockets and invading Israel by land, sea, and air. The report also said that senior Israeli officials have indicated that if they determined that Iran was behind the attack, that they would be targeting Iran's top officials. The timeline means that the attacks were planned around the time that the Biden administration reached a deal in mid-August to unfreeze $6 billion for Iran. And since money is fungible, Iran could have freed up other budgetary resources to support the terrorism. And people will still vote for this guy. Just on this alone should disqualify this dude. Pick anybody else from your bench. Shit, I don't care. Pick AOC for all I care. Somebody just to show that this guy's an idiot that you're not willing to support this knucklehead. I know it was a little far me saying AOC, but for the love of God, you don't have anybody on your bench other than Joe Biden? Nobody? With like some sort of brain that's coherent that can operate in a functional capacity? The meeting where Iranian officials gave the authorization to carry out the attack was held in Beirut last Monday, the journal noted. The newspaper confirmed the story with multiple officials in the Hamas and Hezbollah terror groups and with a Ukraine, uh, European official and an advisor to the Syrian government. The Biden administration claimed on Sunday that they did not have any information that the attack was planned by Iran. God, it blows my fucking mind. The, I've said this before. The amount of times this administration came out and go, oh, we didn't fucking know about anything, is head spinning. They didn't know about the flying objects fly, flying over the United States. And then they came out and go, oh, we kind of knew about it. The, the multiple objects flying over the United States. They didn't know about the terrorists that are sleeper cells in our nation. Then they finally rounded up them and then they go, well, we don't know what happened to them. We don't know where they are. That comes from the DHS secretary. Then they didn't know that China had a fucking spy base in Cuba right off the coast of Florida. Like the amount of shit that they don't know what's going on is insane. It's insane. And then you expect... You expect your safety? Are you stupid? Not you, the listener. I know the Bob Bradshaw viewers have their head on straight. But it, it's crazy how we're sitting here and they're going, oh, no, everything's fine here. Everything's fine in America. Really? Because you have people coming through our southern border that want to do harm to you. 
Not all of them. The vast majority of them, they're just looking for a better life. But what's going on right now? You got to be an idiot to think that there aren't sleeper cells or terrorists actively in our country right now that are plotting to do harm to you or your family. Because you got an old dullard that doesn't want to sit there and figure his shit out at the border. You think there's not... Now that Iran has made threats to America, let's see if they can figure this out in the Democrat Party. Now that Iran, Hezbollah, whoever you want to talk about, Hamas, doesn't matter, all these terrorist groups that now know that the southern border is still open... You're telling me that they still wouldn't utilize it to sit there and do something to us? Do you not remember 9-11? God, some of these people are stupid, man. Obviously, the concern here in this country, the deadly terror attacks in Israel, highlighting concerns about national security threats through the southern border here in the U.S., and the record number of people on the terror watch list stopped there. Bear that out. Bill Malugin, he's been down there for a long time. He's now reporting again live in Brownsville, Texas. Bill, good morning. Uh, it's a big story. Wait, I think he's going to show the numbers. Just wait till you see some of these numbers. You're, you're going to fall over in your chair. Make sure you're sitting down. If you're on the highway, pull over because it's insane. Yeah, Brett, good morning to you. I can tell you for over two years now, Border Patrol agents have been telling us they've got extreme concerns about who is crossing our southern border, primarily because so many agents have been pulled off the front lines to instead focus on processing. And that then leaves gaps in our border where we simply have nobody out on patrol. And the numbers are startling. We'll start with the terror watch list numbers. Fiscal year 2023 so far, 151 people on the FBI's terror watch list have been arrested by Border Patrol agents while they were crossing illegally here at our southern border. That is the highest number on record. It's also higher than the pre- Give it up for Joe Biden. Breaking more records, you guys. Hey, make sure you get down there and vote for him to be the next president of the United States once again. Previous six years combined, the highest number under Trump was six. We got 151 this year so far. Now, the Biden administration says, well, that shows they're catching more people, right? Not exactly. We'll talk about the gotaways. CBP sources telling us since President Biden took office, there have been well over 1.5 million known gotaways at our southern border. These are illegal immigrants who are crossing the border and are seen on cameras or sensors, but Border Patrol doesn't have the manpower to get to them, so they successfully get into the United States without capture. For perspective, that is a population size bigger than the city of Dallas, Texas, that has successfully snuck across our border and gotten into the United States without apprehension. It's enough people to fill up 16 Rose Bowls in Pasadena, California. We also got some brand new internal CBP data leaked to us this morning from CBP sources. If we can pull this graphic up, uh, this data showing that thousands of so-called special interest aliens have been arrested by Border Patrol while crossing at our southern border illegally over the last two years. These special interest countries are what the federal government determines countries or, or uh, conditions that favor terrorism or could potentially pose a threat to the United States. But you can see these countries, thousands from Afghanistan, more than 600 from Iran, more than 160 from Lebanon, the home of Hezbollah, more than 500 people from Syria, the home of ISIS, more than 130 from Yemen, home of the Houthi rebels. And former Border Patrol Chief Rodney Scott, who served under both President Trump and President Biden says when Border Patrol agents encounter these people, they basically have no way of knowing who they are. Take a listen. An open border allowing anybody to come in is a national security threat. This administration keeps wanting to talk about we're vetting people coming in. That's just simply not true. We have very little information on the the. For those that's listening, this is Rodney Scott, the former Border Patrol chief. Okay, so the guy knows what the hell he's talking about people across this entire globe. And to elaborate on that point, Border Patrol sources tell us that they simply have little to zero way of vetting these people from these so-called special interest countries. I'm told unless they've got a criminal record in the United States already or they're on some sort of federal watch list, there's no way for Border Patrol to find out about any possible criminal record. That's because these home countries that they're coming from, mostly in the Middle East, they don't share their records or their data with the United States. So when Border Patrol agents run their names or try to run their fingerprints there's literally nothing there for whoa whoa i was told by the biden administration that these countries are in full support and are helping us in every front about this whole illegal immigrant thing that's going on in our southern border 
And now you're telling me that, Bill, you're telling me that they're not supplying us with the credible information that we need to vet these people? Oh, okay. You mean I should be fully entrusting my safety with the Biden administration that's sole job as the executive branch is to protect me? Oh, okay. For them to compare it to. So obviously major concern, uh, security concerns down here at our southern border, especially with what's happening in Israel right now, Brett. We'll send Bill, it back to you. Those numbers are staggering. Uh, the numbers especially of those countries where obviously suspected terrorists have come from before. There has to be this huge level of frustration in the CBP. And obviously they're, le these, they're giving these numbers for a reason. Uh, you've dealt with this for a long time this frustration is probably pretty high. It is, and their morale is in the toilet. And again, a lot of these Border Patrol, border patrol agents tell us they feel like they've been turned into social workers. They sign up for this job to patrol the front lines of the United States, go after the bad guys, go after the drug smugglers, go after the criminals and the cartels. Instead, many of them feel like they're paper pushers now, basically a welcome concierge, uh, driving migrants around, dropping them off at centers, filling out paperwork. And again, they're off the front lines. And Border Patrol leadership has expressed frustration about this, that they want to have have their agents out there patrolling to go after the bad guys but when they get these huge groups of thousands of people crossing at once that the cartels are pushing across it sucks up all their resources and again it leaves gaps in the border completely unpatrolled that's where the national security threat comes in and you hit the nail on the head brett there is massive frustration within border patrol and with cbp mm -hmm. and thanks to these sources we have they're able to get us these numbers and kind of put all this into perspective yeah. for them. it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable the bleep that Joe Biden gets away with from the media, from his supporters. I'm not saying Trump's a gem, but look at none of this stuff happened. And you're damn right. As of right now, the man's getting my, for my vote. When you got people that want to harm you, that, are, that have the high probability of getting through that border. And you know what? It might not happen in four years. There could be a terrorist attack. Say Trump does get in. They could be sitting there as a sleeper cell, sleeping, plotting something big that happens under Trump's watch because you had a prior administration that didn't want to do their job. And people will still, I, mean, I know I'm repeating myself, but people will still vote for this guy. Just if you wanted to guess, you guys, what side of the aisle do you think most likely is in support of Hamas. Do you think it's Republicans and conservatives? I don't bleepin think so. Like I said, it's astonishing that there's people holding up LGBTQ flags for Palestine and for Hamas. It's, it's just, let it sink in how stupid you have to be. You live in the greatest country that's God's ever created in human existence, and you're going to complain that you're oppressed, people won't call you by the correct pronoun, whatever it is. Again, I want to treat everybody with as much respect as I possibly can, but you live in the greatest country that God's ever created, and you can complain when this bleep's going on. You need to wake the hell up. And I'm talking to the Democrats and the progressive left. You need to wake up. Democrats, wake up for what's going on in your cities. Wake up for what's going on around the world. Wake up to what this president is doing and not doing, vastly not doing, protecting the borders executing the laws that are on the books how about you don't give fucking terrorists six billion dollars how about you just come out front and say look we're not gonna do it i don't mean to cuss but it's fearful when you have people that are willing to exacerbate and support terrorists i, I can't i literally can't wrap my head around that Free Palestine, whatever. At least there's there's an argument there. But there is no argument to support Hamas. There's no argument to support Iran. There's no argument to support bleeping terrorists. And you have a president that just armed a bunch of them by pulling out of Afghanistan because he can't pull his head out of his you-know-what and get his ish together. It's so, I'm, I thank God I have you guys to sit there and vent to. Thank God I have somebody that actually understands. Because it's so frustrating. I'm sure you guys are all frustrated just as much as I am. But it helped me, for the love of God, understand how there's people roaming this earth. They're going, 
Yeah, I know. It's not. I there's footage. This is why. This is where I get this crap. There's footage of going. Eh, it had to happen. Yeah, some people had to be killed. It had to happen. It's not just people are being killed, you moron. Not you as the viewer. The people that are saying this on videotape that I've watched. Like they're they're in the where it came from was the streets of New York because there's protests going on in New York and you have these idiots going oh yeah you know people flying in yeah some people had to be killed and, oh the festival where they freaking massacred and mowed a bunch of people down yeah yeah I know it was a thing but it had to happen that's yeah, not that big so some people died it's not some people died you idiot they're freaking beheading children like. It's so it's like as if they haven't seen the footage or the video or something like what could could get through their thick skull that it's evil stuff. And these people go out and vote. That's the most mind bending thing. These people were the people that voted for Joe Biden. And you're damn right that they want to continue to vote for Joe Biden because where are all their little friends, meaning Hamas, getting all this stuff from Iran that Joe Biden wants to give $6 billion to, that he gave a billion dollars to under the Obama administration that's exacerbated the whole uranium enrichment program to build nuclear weapons, which is why Thomas Sowell says Barack Obama was the worst president in American history because it set us back decades in terms of our protection and our national security that Joe Biden seems to rave about, that he's doing a fabulous job at our southern border and his foreign policy. I don't think so, bro. All right, I think I'm done venting, man. I'm so pissed. I'm getting a headache right now. I would love your support, you guys. We got a join tab over here. You got a guy that supports Israel, but also supports our country. I love America to death, regardless of whether you're Democrat or Republican. We're all Americans. We need our safety right now. We got to back each other the F up. We're all family at the end of the day. You mess with America, you're going to find out. And right now, you got a lot of countries that not only want to mess with Israel, but they want to mess with you, Americans. We got to band together on this one here. Now is the time to... Round the troops, baby. We got to sit there and band together. I'm asking for your support. Hit that like and subscribe button, regardless of whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Hit that join tab right over here. Become a patient today. You know where your hard-earned money is going. Somebody that loves this freaking country and wants to protect this country and make it and continue to make it the best country that God's ever given or created. Uh, we got a book on baldbrad.com. Links to our merchandise is down in the description below. We'd love your support on all fronts, folks. I think Amazon is still running a deal on our book, Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. Well, hell, you're seeing it in real time, but in, in ways I wasn't hoping that it would happen. Not that I hope to destroy America, but in the sense of, I don't, I didn't expect this to happen. But uh, Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. You're seeing what they're doing in real time, folks. Not only are they destroying this country from the inside out, but now they're destroying other countries from the inside out as well. Uh, we would love your support in purchasing the book. It's a great gift for a friend or family member. Hell, even just buy it for a coaster. Have it there on the counter when somebody walks in that's a Democrat going, oh, what's that? I don't know. Maybe you should read it. So uh, I think they're still running the deal on Amazon. Last time I checked, I think it was like 25, 30% off, somewhere in that range. Uh, there's mugs. There's all that stuff. Thanks for your support, folks. I apologize for being uh, so emotional, but it's hard not to be emotional when something like this goes on. Uh, and I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, it's not a big deal. I try to be level-headed. I don't want my emotions to come out. It's, it's, it's just evil, man. This is what evil looks like and, and people just don't get it. So, uh, we should be back here tomorrow with another episode of the Bald Brad Show. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. Share this with your friends and family all over social media, folks. I'll see you tomorrow here.